Welcome back to the Traceability and Food Businesses video series. I'm Jamie Miller, registered SQF consultant at Kellerman Consulting. Kellerman Consulting releases weekly training videos and important tips and strategies to help companies keep up to date with the latest food safety regulations. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button at the bottom of the video screen. In the last episode, we discussed what traceability information to document at the point of receiving, how to assign item numbers, and the basics of proper stock rotation practices. In this episode, we focus on traceability during processing. We will discuss how to document information during processing using batch records and how to properly identify work in process and rework materials to ensure traceability. Once materials are used in the course of production or operations, tracking the movement and use of that material becomes more challenging. Documenting the use of materials in production can be accomplished by using batch records. Batch records are processing records that are used to document information for all of the materials used in the process of producing a finished product. The use of batch records allows a site to track all of the components used and create a finished product and to link the lot codes to each individual component to correspond with the lot code of the finished product. Depending on the complexity of a site, a batching information may be captured either by using a software system or a simple form. Regardless of the format used, batch records should include the material name or item number, lot number, and quantity of materials used in producing the finished product. Depending on the type of finished product involved, the quantity of material used may be documented by an item count, weight, volume, or a combination of the three. Batching information should be documented for every component used in the finished product, including processing aids, packaging materials, and labels. Lastly, included with the batching information should be the lot code of the finished product created by the batch components so that the link between the materials and the finished product is documented. A fully functional traceability system must include proper identification and documentation of the use of what we refer to as work in progress, or WIP, materials. Work in progress refers to a partially finished product that requires further processing. This can include processing methods such as grinding, portioning, or cooking, and can also include materials that are awaiting packaging. Work in progress materials may be considered in progress for hours, days, or even weeks. Regardless of the reason or time frame, work in progress materials are those that require additional action in order to be considered a finished product. Proper identification of work in progress materials is mandatory for complete traceability. Work in progress identification should include the material name, batching information, use by date if applicable, and the actions needed to finish the material. For example, work in progress beef trim materials that are intended for further processing should be identified with the ingredients and lot codes used in the creation of the material, the date by which to use the material in further processing, and proper identification for labeling it, such as beef trim for grinding. The identification of materials that are work in progress is especially important when the materials are transferred between departments or facilities, or when the materials are held in the work in progress or WIP status for extended periods of time. Rework material is defined as raw materials, ingredients, work in progress, or finished products that are unadulterated, have left the normal process flow, and require additional actions to be taken to successfully reprocess or incorporate the material into a finished product. Rework materials are typically generated from non-conforming events or process deviations such as labeling errors, defective packaging, formulation errors, or equipment malfunction. Regardless of the reason for the rework material generation, the use of rework materials in an operation must be documented for complete traceability. When used, rework material information must be documented on batch records and should include the batching information for the rework material, the production date for the rework material, and the quantity of rework material used in the process. Just as critical as the identification of ingredients and materials within a site, 
is the identification of finished products. How a facility chooses to identify a finished product is often product dependent and can be impacted by the facility's level of advanced technology. Some businesses may select what is called a Gregorian code. This type of coding takes the use by or best by dates to identify finished products and is typically only used when the product's expiration date defines the lot of product produced and where the expiration date would apply to all products made during a given time period. Other businesses may use only production dates as a product identifier. In this case, all products made on that day will carry the production date. Another form of finished product identification is lot coding. Lot codes are a series of numbers and or letters that a site uses to identify the particular batch, lot, or groups of products made at a particular time. Lot codes can include a variety of information about the lot of finished products, including what date, shift, or time the product was manufactured, processed, or packaged on, the best by or used by date of the product, and even what line or piece of equipment the product was processed or packaged on. As we have mentioned in previous episodes, the level of sophistication of a lot code is often determined by a level of complexity in the site's product or process. One other form of lot coding that is commonly used in the food business is Julian date coding. The Julian date code is a form of coding that involves a numeric system in which each Julian date is equal to the numerical date in a calendar year. Julian date coding is a great method to introduce lot codes to manufacturers who have no experience in developing lot codes because it's just a number that can easily be determined by looking at a chart. And unless someone is familiar with the food storage industry, chances are consumers won't know how to read Julian dates. In this example of Julian date coding, the first two digits are the last numbers of the calendar year, and the three digits after the hyphen are the day of that year. So for instance, a Julian date of 21-003 represents the third day of the year of 2021, or January 3rd, 2021, while a Julian date of 22 dash 205 represents the 205th day of the year of 2022 or July 24th, 2022. The use of Julian date coding is an efficient, simple way to document the day and month that a product was produced. Thank you for watching. In our next episode of the traceability series, we'll discuss how to conduct a traceability exercise, how trace exercises and mock recalls differ and the importance of testing both your traceability and recall systems. For more food safety training videos and resources, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or follow us on LinkedIn.